Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Iris. I'm a professional volleyball player who also has a lot of coaching experience at different age levels and different experience levels. I know you guys loved the Haiku reaction video. Uh, let me just clear some things up. I have seen season one and I just felt randomly like I wanted to do a reaction video to whatever episode I left off of. So I was on season two, episode six. Thank you so much for everyone's uh, awesome feedback on it and I'm glad you guys enjoyed that video. Today I'm going to start from season one just because it's a fresh series on my channel. Speaking of what I do on my channel, I do volleyball videos, uh, makeup stuff, lifestyle type of vlogs, just different type of vlogs on my channel that's enjoyable for me and hopefully enjoyable for you guys. Oh my gosh, it's hot today. And in today's video, I'm going to do another Haiku reaction video. I'm not going to guarantee that I'm going through every single episode because uh, in terms of legality, I don't, I don't think I can actually do that. So yeah, I can't guarantee that I'm going to go through every episode. And, it, and on top of that, this isn't like what my channel is hyper focused on. I think I'm gonna do a weekly series of this, but Again, I just wanna make it clear, I will not guarantee that I'm going to go through every single episode of every single season. It is what it is. <laughs> In today's video, I'm going to go through season one, episode two. Episode one was, it's an introduction episode to the whole series. So you guys know how it goes. You introduce the main characters and a little bit of their background. Before we get into it, please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see this weekly series that I'm going to try to make weekly. <laughs> All right, let's get into this. We're just doing a quick recap. They lost the game. He felt bad. Been there before many times. <laughs> Throughout my playing career, I have always remembered playing against people who either have great volleyball potential or people who are just absolutely amazing, obviously. You know, the, uh, the amazing people stand out in your mind. So yeah, this happens all the time. Usually when you're playing people across the net, you you tend to remember the ones that stand out the most either in the way that they're so elite or in a way that you remember quirky things about them. All right, so already in this whole conversation, you see that you've got way different personalities and that just happens on a team. Whoever you are, whatever level you're at, respect people, be kind to people, and put the energy out into the world that you want to receive. <laughs> Dramatic effect. I understand it. I get it, you guys. Hinata is just like over the top. He's so passionate and I totally understand that. I feel that passion. But don't take everything so personally. It's not everything in life is not is that deep. That's a hard lesson to learn when you're young, but I mean, also people learn it when they're older. I wish I could have learned that back in high school when I was, you know, in his shoes as well. <laughs> Ooh, serve and pass challenge. These happen all the time in practices. Coaches can call out two players or, you know, two teams who are playing against each other can volunteer one person. Those two decide whoever is the server and one is the passer. I don't know. If you guys were in a serve and pass challenge, would you would you be the server? Would you be the passer? Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, I'm a setter, not that I can't pass, but I trust my serving skills a lot more than I would trust my passing skills. So let me know which one you guys would pick, passer or server. <laughs> Ooh, awkward. 
<laughs> oh, not the toupee. In the States, we don't have like gigantic arenas like that in high school volleyball. Maybe in certain states where volleyball is like the thing, but there's not many of those. Again, in the States, when you're playing high school club volleyball, we do have nationals. And in order to qualify for nationals, you have to go to these specific uh, club volleyball tournaments that can they're called qualifiers so if you earn your bid in the qualifier you're in for the nationals and usually teams will enter into like maybe two to three tournaments depending on your team's budget if you guys can pay enough money to go play at these tournaments and this is where recruiting happens for college and all that stuff so nationals is a big thing they used to when i was in high school we we used to call it junior olympics which made it sound super cool <laughs> but nowadays it's called nationals and there's like so many different divisions of nationals there used to be just three there used to be american slash patriot um, USA slash national or the open division. Open was the top division. And that's not to say national and Patriot were not bad at all. Like just remember you qualified into this tournament out of thousands of teams in your age division. And sometimes it just works out to where at one qualifying tournament, you go in wanting to get an open bid, but at the end of the season, you end up getting a national or a Patriot bid. It is what it is. Like you can find some of the top teams in the lowest division of nationals, or you can even find some teams that you're like, how did they even qualify for open? And you find those types of teams in the top division. So it's, it's mixed up. It's, it's a crazy thing, but um, it is what it is. It's crazy now that there's five divisions in girls junior nationals because you have to literally earn your spot in qualifications. So now, even if you don't actually qualify, you your team can pay to go play. The only reason I can see why that would be okay is because there's college coaches at nationals that want to re go recruit. Anyway, just a little backstory on club nationals. It's so funny. When I was in middle school, we had this really like tough rival. And then when we all got to high school together, it was still like a weird thing. Like, oh, we used to be super, super duper rivals, but now we're playing for the same school. So, I mean, but we all got along, obviously. We we're nice nice gals it's a weird dynamic change when that happens and it's it's kind of funny that's where you put in the leadership people I remember big moments in my playing career. Specifically, I remember playing against the rival of our middle school team and the emotions and the excitement and how all that felt and how intense it was. That was super intense. And that's when I wasn't even like good at volleyball. So I totally understand what he's saying. And then and I also remember feelings and emotions and how like the environment was when it came to playing in big moments in my high school and collegiate career and my professional career as well. So yeah, sometimes, no matter how many times you've been doing something, there's always some big moments in your career that you're always like, well, this is it. Okay, let's go. And it's, it's pretty cool. I don't know if anyone else can relate to this. Obviously, Hinata can, I'm sure. If I can, then other people can. It's pretty cool. It's a cool feeling as an athlete. And the higher you get in level of skill and all that stuff, the more you become good and you realize it, then these moments that may seem small to someone else are actually pretty big for you. And that's super cool. So it's like a 
雰囲気見るためにやってるゲームだそっか問題児を牛耳れるのは田中くらいだと思ってたんだけどなあしょうがねえなやってやるよ Where I've been, captains are not this involved in the whole process and practice and all this stuff. That's usually the coach's job. I mean, I get it. The coach probably isn't like a super gigantic factor and this is probably for character development, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But it's just funny because in real life, captains are not this much involved. Let me know if that's different from where you are and where you've played, but Realistically, the coach would be the one with the most say in how things are go in practice. Ooh, self-centered setters who can't play for them. Wait, what? Self-centered setters who can't play for themselves can't help a team win. Did I read that right? I don't know. It sounds kind of funny to me, but I'll take a chunk out of that sentence and say self-centered setters can't help a team win. You're, if you're a setter, you're distributing the offense. Which means you can't be self centered. You can't make it all around you. The setter is the quarterback of the team. They run the offense. There's so much in a setter's role that people don't understand. It's not written in the job description or whatever, but you have to have a certain type of thing about you if you're a setter. You can be someone who can set a ball, but being a setter is something completely different. Setter! Biased opinion, yes, setters are the coolest, okay? Uh, yeah, I, if you guys have ever watched a volleyball game, I love, I hate sitting on the side of the court. The sitting at the end line, trying to be at eye level with the net is obviously like, for me, it's the best. I personally feel like you can just see a lot more. In the States, when we're doing film sessions, we do film sessions based off the end line view. But yeah, when you're sitting from the end line, you can just see a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> I love this ongoing competitiveness that they have throughout the season. It's actually pretty funny. All right, guys, that was the end of that episode. My final thoughts on it. Um, again, it's more of an introductory background type of episode, so it's cool. No big deal. But I did like what Kageyama was saying about setters. Again, it's repeating what I was saying earlier is that I think the setting position in general is underrated. Great setters make that position well known, which is super awesome. Yeah, that's all I got for you guys. I'm Again, I want to make it clear that I cannot guarantee that I'm going to do every single episode, but I will try to do as many episodes of these as possible and I'll try to make a whole series out of this. Um, I'll try to upload a video every week about it. But again, I also have different videos on my channel that I enjoy doing, and that's what I'm all about, is just doing what I love to do. But let me know what you guys thought about my reaction. What do you guys think about the show? I got, again, I got a lot of comments saying how much they love the show, how inspired they were to play volleyball because of the show, and let me tell you, that is so awesome. Once you find something that inspires you and it motivates you to get better at doing something, I think that's amazing and good for you guys. If you're a volleyball player, let me know what position you are. Or if you're not a volleyball player, what position do you want to play? What position do you think you can play? And if you haven't already, go ahead and check out some of the other volleyball videos I have on my channel. I have some ball control drills, I have some tips for club players, um, just different type of volleyball videos. But yeah, let me, let me know what else you guys want to see on my channel and if, again, if you did enjoy this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in the next video. If you volley, I dig it.